Hey everyone, this is Digital Coleman and I'm back with another tutorial for Tesland where you can try out minting, aka making your own objects, either for personal use in your place or for something that you want to sell, uh, or even maybe give away for other people to use in their space or place. Uh, we're going to start actually today in Blender. I wanted to show you this quick model that I made, uh, which is a ground terrain that I'm using for my own space, and point out that one of the things that you really want to pay attention to is the triangles down here in the lower corner of Blender. Um, and you can turn these on in preferences. I'm not going to go through that here, uh, but we need to keep this triangle count under 5,000 triangles in order for it to be mintable or at least, sorry, you can mint it, uh, but in order for it to be viewable for most people in Tesland. Uh, so do make sure that you pay careful attention to your triangles, not faces, not vertices, but triangles. That's gonna be the really important part. Um, the other thing to note here is that in general, you're probably just going to want to use a principled BSDF, AKA a classic PBR, um, rendering material, uh, and really the things that are only going to come into play in a space like this are the base color, the metallicness, the specular, the roughness. Um, you're not going to see that much more. Uh, the alpha also does work to a certain extent, and certainly you can play around with that for some interesting effects. But beyond that, uh, unless you start using UV and uh, UV mapping uh, and perhaps even normal mapping, uh, you're not going to get a lot of the other sort of subtle capabilities that you might be used to uh, with uh, a more advanced rendering inside of Blender when you go to Tesland. So once I've done that, I'm actually going to go to File and I'm going to export a GLTF. Uh, this will actually export a GLB uh, as part of its sort of default practice. For those of you who don't know, a GLTF file uh, and a GLB are actually the same thing. A GLB is just a binary compressed version of a GLTF. Uh, so it's not a big deal. Uh, you can kind of work with either. Uh, in general, I try to select the object and then use the include button only for selected objects. That way I'm not including lights and cameras or anything else. I'm just exporting the model that I want. And that tends to help quite a bit. Uh, I leave all these other settings fairly uh, normal. In this case, I like to do a lot of things with vertex colors as opposed to UV maps. So I'm using those instead of UVs, but you use what you need for your model. I'm trusting that you've made some of those decisions. Make sure compression is turned off. I've found that it doesn't work. Uh, with this particular import. Um, and right now you still can't use animation, so uh, these are kind of irrelevant, although that might be coming. It'll be interesting to see. So I'm just going to give this a new name. So now I've got a new piece of ground that I'm going to export, and boom, it's already done, and uh, it's on my desktop or wherever I set my default file place. So I'm going to come over to Tesland. Uh, it, ha it should be said that one of the things that you might want to do to check your GLTF before you try minting it and bringing it all the way here is you can go to the babylonjs.com sandbox. Uh, you can see the URL here, sandbox.babylonjs.com, and drag your GLB to that particular place. And this will give you a quick preview of how your model might be read. Now this isn't exactly what you're going to see, uh, but it does show you whether or not your model is kind of working, uh, because that is one stage of just like, is the basic functionality there or not? So it looks good. Uh, I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, all of my faces are, all my normals are facing the right way and all that good stuff. So that's just a quick test you can get, do. Now I'm gonna go here to Tesland and I'm gonna use the mint function. I will note here that you can mint in explore mode as well, uh, and that might be a quicker way sometimes, 
but sometimes you might just want to mint here without opening up the explore uh, space. It's totally up to you. Both workflows are perfectly fine. So I'm gonna hit browse. I'm gonna find that brand new uh, GLB that I just made. Let's see here, ground two. And there we go, we see it come up. Now, it's worth mentioning here that you don't really need to worry about like, is the model centered? What scale is the model? All of those things. Uh, the developer of Tesland has sort of basically uh, scrunched everything to be the same initial scale, the same initial size. And then you can scale it up or down uh, and uh, as much as you want to once you get it there. So uh, it doesn't really matter if you're using two blender units or 20 blender units or uh, 30 meters or one meter or one centimeter, it doesn't seem to matter at all. Uh, they all start basically at the same size in Tez land. Uh, so don't worry about it. And then a, bot an, uh, a bounding box is automatically generated as well. Uh, so you don't have to account too much for whether or not this is above or below a, a ground plane because again, that's also something that you can adjust on the fly. Once I've got my model, I would put in a title. This will be ground two. I can put in a description of something. Uh, we can do tags, although tags don't have a lot of usefulness yet. And then how many of them I want to mint. Uh, remember that, especially if you're gonna give something away, you might wanna mint a whole bunch of them at once. Uh, it's because you don't really want to mint the same thing twice through this process. It's better that you sort of mint a bunch of additions the first time, and you can burn some of them later if you'd like to. Uh, but this is just a test, so I'm just going to do one. And then you have royalties, which is uh, every time your piece is resold, uh, then uh, how much do you get on that secondary transaction? All that information has to be put in when you initially mint. So I'm going to mint that item and temple, temple will open up and I need to authorize that. And we can see here that this will cost me 28 cents uh, to do the uh, storage and gas. It's totally reasonable. I'm going to confirm that transaction and you'll see that it'll be pending down here in the corner uh, and it will soon go green. We're just waiting on the blockchain at this point, uh, which, you know, tends to happen about every 30 seconds. And once that's done, uh, we will go to the next step, which is uh, placing things in Tesland. And that's going to be our next video. So I will see you there.